Welcome to the CBR Anime Olympics, where YouTube creators seek to prove themselves in a competition of video content expertise. Today, I'll be going for the gold as I try to summarize the entire Dragon Ball Z anime within 15 minutes. Ready, set, go! When we last left our heroes at the end of the Dragon Ball anime, Goku and Piccolo Jr. had settled their beef with a big final fight and Goku tied the knot with Chi Chi. Happily ever after, right? Yeah, not even close. That's because this happy peace on Earth was crashed by an alien spaceship. Goku's surprise older brother, who was a member of a warrior race known as Saiyans, came to see if his younger bro had conquered Earth yet. Once he saw that Goku hadn't actually conquered anything, he decided to capture Goku's son Gohan to use as leverage. Goku then teamed up with his old rival Piccolo to take Raditz on in a fast-paced brutal battle which would set the tone for all the battles to come. It ended with Goku holding his older brother as Piccolo launched a special beam cannon that cut through both of them. This victory was short-lived though because Raditz informed our heroes that two more Saiyan were on their way to get those magical Dragon Balls he'd heard so much about. With that, both Raditz and Goku let out their last breaths. This started the ticking clock until the next Saiyan invasion would arrive. Since this was Dragon Ball, Goku biting the big one wasn't the end at all. In the afterlife, Goku decided to run through the legendary path known as Snake Way to study with the legendary master, King Kai. Meanwhile, back on Earth, Piccolo decided to train Gohan, which was no easy task. The nerdy Saiyan kiddo may have shown some potential during the Raditz scuffle, but it took a dinosaur, a new wardrobe, and some animal friends to make a fighter out of Gohan. Piccolo may have been a harsh teacher, but the bonds between him and Gohan became a fan favorite that would shape the fight to come. Then the day came when Saiyans Vegeta and Nappa arrived on Earth. After causing some mayhem, the Z fighters challenged them. It did not go well. Yamcha lost his life to a green alien minion, while Chiatsu and Tien lost theirs after giving a valiant but ultimately failed fight against Nappa. Gohan, Piccolo, and Krillin took the bald Saiyan on with mixed results as well. Ultimately, Piccolo sacrificed his life to save Gohan. It was a very emotional moment that also ruined the Saiyan's mission because without Piccolo, the Dragon Balls would cease to exist. Luckily, Goku was already wished back to life and he was a lot more prepared. He took Nappa to school, proving that he would always be worth the wait. Ultimately, it was Vegeta who ended Nappa out of annoyance. He then took on Goku, which proved to be a lot more difficult for our hero. Vegeta was a brutal fighter who had a huge power level, a controlled great ape transformation, and no mercy. Luckily, Goku had his Kaioken attack, which multiplied his power level, and his spirit bomb, which collected the energy of the lives of Earth into a powerful bomb. This turned out to be just shy of enough to take Vegeta down, but luckily Goku's cowardly friend Yajirobe managed to cut off Vegeta's tail, ending his great ape form. Then Gohan's great ape form crushed Vegeta just as he was reverting back to his human form. Pretty much everyone was critically injured, but Vegeta managed to crawl into his spaceship to get away. Now that so many heroes had lost their lives and there were no Dragon Balls to bring them back, our heroes had no choice. They had to go to Piccolo's homeworld, Namek, to use their Dragon Balls to save everyone. That's right, it's time to go to space. Goku's Dragon Ball find and partner Bulma accompanied Krillin and Gohan on their big space adventure, while Goku recovered from his bitter showdown with Vegeta. Meanwhile, Vegeta was also getting healed up. He revealed the Saiyan secret that every time a member of their race was defeated, their power level would increase significantly. He then betrayed his bosses in the Frieza Force and decided to make a Namekian Dragon Ball play himself. After some filler adventures, everyone made it to Namek and things immediately got real. It turns out that the titular Frieza of the Frieza Force was a monster, even by Dragon Ball standards. He was going around innocent Namekian villages, brutally attacking villagers with his henchmen until they told him where the Dragon Balls were. Meanwhile, everyone else was scrambling around Namek, making friends with friendly Namekians like the Piccolo-esque Nail, the Grand Elder Guru, and his apprentice Dende. The Grand Elder gives Krillin and Go a ton of experience points, which will come in handy because Frieza has called in his elite squad known as the Ginyu Force. Luckily, Goku has recovered enough to travel through space and he's doing some hardcore training in extreme gravity. Seriously, no one can put this man on bed rest. The Ginyu Force arrives and gives our heroes trouble, but luckily that's when Goku decided to make his dramatic entrance. He takes Rikum out with one punch. Then they take on the rest of the Ginyu Force with Goku's help. 
That's when Captain Ginyu himself shows his ultimate trick. He switches bodies with Goku, but ultimately gets tricked into switching into a frog's body instead. Don't you hate it when that happens? Unfortunately, Goku's body was brutally beaten while Ginyu was in control, so he's taken off the board to heal yet again. This starts to become a trend if you can't tell. This leads to a big final push for the Dragon Balls, which sees the Namekian dragon summoned at last. He also has three wishes to give instead of one. Our heroes wish for Piccolo to be revived and brought to Namek, and with one wish left, Vegeta tries to get immortality, but the dragon disappears before any immortality can be granted. His creator, the Grand Elder, passed away, which meant he stopped existing. Unfortunately, that's when Frieza showed up and things got real. That's because Frieza started an ever-escalating battle with our fighters where they would try to take him on only for him to transform into an even more terrifying version of himself. Even after Piccolo combined with Nail and joined the fray, it was clear that there was no hope for the Z fighters plus Vegeta to take Frieza's final form on. Just as all hope was lost, Goku arrived ready to fight. You gotta admit, he loves a dramatic entrance. The battered Vegeta reveals to Goku that Frieza was the one who destroyed their homeworld and begs him to avenge their race with his final breath. Thus begins the best fight in the franchise, yeah I said it, as Goku throws everything at Frieza. Even with all this, it's still not enough to take Frieza down. As an ultimate act of sadism, Frieza decides to destroy Krillin just for the fun of it. This proves to be the last straw for Goku, who in his rage ascends to Super Saiyan. Goku then shows Frieza what fear is but doesn't finish Frieza off. This proves to be a mistake as Frieza decides to destroy Namek to take Goku down. He can survive in the void of space unlike Goku. Everyone else gets wished back to Earth and most everyone gets wished back to life but Goku stays to take Frieza down. Eventually, Goku takes the sliced up Frieza down with a final Kamehameha wave. Though he doesn't make it off Namek in time, the planet explodes and Goku is seemingly destroyed along with it. Vegeta, Gohan, Krillin, Piccolo, Bulma, and the Namekians awaken on Earth without Goku, unsure of what to do next. Alright, I know you're looking at that clock video bar and you're thinking how could he possibly finish the series in time? Well, prepare to be amazed. Frieza's father, King Cold, finds the surviving Frieza and grafts him a special new cyborg body. The pair go to Earth for revenge but are interrupted by a new warrior named Trunks. He defeats both in record time, revealing himself to be a Super Saiyan in the process. Goku arrives on Earth with a new teleportation power he gained on an alien world. While this seems like good news, Trunks reveals that he's from an apocalyptic future where most everyone has been destroyed by two evil androids. It's also revealed that he's none other than the surprise son of Vegeta and Bulma? Who saw that coming? Our heroes prepare for the androids and take on the creepy clown and old man pair that they think are the apocalyptic duo Trunks referred to. Goku gets taken down by a heart virus, but Vegeta saves the day by revealing he has also gone Super Saiyan. Unfortunately, it's actually two other androids, 17 and 18, that are the ones responsible for Trunks' dark future. 18 shows just how formidable they are by taking Vegeta down with one of the the dirtiest kicks in the entire franchise. Meanwhile, things just get worse as another android is revealed. This biological monster, known as Cell, horrifically consumes people with his tail, slowly gaining strength. Piccolo, who has finally combined with Kame to reach his full potential, plays detective and discovers that Cell is the real threat. If he manages to consume both 17 and 18, he will become nigh unstoppable. Cell ends up absorbing 17, but Vegeta arrives with a new Super Saiyan Grade 2 form he achieved while training in the hyperbolic time chamber with his son Trunks. He makes easy work of imperfect Cell, but his pride gets the best of him. He allows Cell to absorb 18, who Krillin failed to destroy because he he'd fallen in love with her. Perfect Cell shows himself to be more powerful than both Vegeta and Trunks. He also wants to prove his worth as the ultimate being by staging a fighting competition known as the Cell Games. A recovered Goku takes Gohan to the hyperbolic time chamber to train as well and arrives in time for the games. Cell slowly takes on each of the Z fighters until it's Goku's turn. While he shows Cell a good fight, Goku bows out of the contest to allow his son to take Cell down. This proves to be a painful choice as Cell pulls a fast one during his showdown with Gohan and attempts to self-destruct. Goku instant transmissions Cell to King Kai's planet, which obliterates both himself and King Kai. Unfortunately, one of Cell's cells survived, and he becomes his perfect self again. Luckily, Gohan reveals that he's mastered the Super 
Super Saiyan 2 form and eventually destroys Cell with a Kamehameha wave inspired by his father. Everyone seemingly gets a happy ending as Goku decides to stay deceased, Gohan has completed his character arc, Krillin gets together with the Resurrected 18, and Trunks returns to his time to save it for good. Things would stay pretty peaceful as Gohan grew up, but we all know that wouldn't last. Goku returns to Earth for a fighting competition to find that he has a new son, Goten, and that Gohan has become something of a superhero. The competition teases Goku and Vegeta's big rematch, but is interrupted by an evil plot. A wizard named Babidi is revealed to be using energy from the fighters to bring back his father's legendary monster, Majin Buu. His most notable plot in this regard is to reawaken Vegeta's evil nature, leading to he and Goku's big rematch. Majin Vegeta reveals that he wasn't actually under Babidi's thumb, but wanted to exploit him for the rematch. Unfortunately, Majin Buu was indeed brought back. The creepy pink puffball proves to be the most difficult foe yet, as Majin Vegeta sacrifices his life in vain to take Buu out, to no success. Everything that our heroes threw at Majin Buu failed to end him, ranging from Goku Super Saiyan 3 to Goten and Trunks' combined form Gotenks to Gohan's ultimate form with the famous Z-Sword and even Goku and Vegeta's combined form Vegito. Eventually, Majin Buu was split into a good and evil form. The evil one continually turned our heroes into chocolate and ate them, consuming their powers. Eventually, he found himself in his final form, Kid Buu. Luckily, Goku manages to finally take down Buu with help from the good Buu and his friends. The world is saved once again and Kid Buu is even reincarnated as the plucky young Oob. It seems like all is well for our heroes. That is, until a certain god of destruction comes to town. I don't know about you, but I'd call that a gold medal run. I mean, no one else was competing, but still, it counts. Give me that gold CBR Olympic medal, please.